Ich stehe im Korridor. Jetzt gehe ich ins Zimmer. Und jetzt stehe ich im Zimmer. Ins Zimmer? Im Zimmer? What has German got in store for us now? Location, location, location doesn't only apply to real estate. It also comes into play when learning German. That's because German makes a very clear distinction between in and into, on and onto, etc. English tends to be a little bit slack in this respect. You can easily get away with saying, I put the book on the table, as opposed to onto the table. In German, though, it's not the preposition that changes, but the same preposition is followed by a different case, depending whether you're talking about location or movement towards a destination. This group of prepositions are called two-way prepositions. German even has a special question word for asking about direction. We ask, where are you going to? Wohin gehst du? To ask about a location, you say... Wo bist du? Let's investigate this fascinating aspect of the German language in detail. When we're talking about movement towards a destination, we use the accusative after the preposition. When we talk about a location, we use the dative. It's almost like the difference between a movie and a photo. The accusative denotes movement. It's dynamic. You need a video camera to capture it. It answers the question... Wohin? Where to? The dative indicates location. It's static. You can capture it in a photo. It answers the question... Wo? Where? That's why I said before... Ich gehe ins Zimmer. I'm going into the room, moving with the accusative. Ich stehe im Zimmer. I'm standing in the room. Location, 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 dative. Note that you use a contracted form of the preposition and article where possible. You say ins, short for in das, and im, short for in dem. This is more elegant and not so cumbersome. Let's take a minute now to revise prepositions. Remember, there are some that must always be followed by the accusative. Durch, ohne, gegen, bis, um, für and some that are always followed by the dative. Von, zu, seit, nach, aus, mit, bei, entgegen, gegenüber. You probably know these off by heart. You may remember them by using the mnemonics dog buff for the accusative and Herr von und zu Snumbeg for the dative. Now let's look at the two-way prepositions. As we've said, they're followed by the accusative to show movement and the dative to show location. Here's a summary of them, including their contracted forms. An. Meaning on a vertical surface, at or to. In the accusative, showing movement, remember the video camera. Ich hänge das Bild an den Haken. I hang the picture on the hook. Ich hänge das Bild ans Brett. I hang the picture on the board. Ans is the contracted form of an das. Ich hänge das Bild an die Wand. In the dative, showing location, like a photo. Das Bild hängt am Haken. The picture's hanging on the hook. Am is the contracted form of an dem. Das Bild hängt am Brett. The picture's hanging on the board. Das Bild hängt an der Wand. The picture's hanging on the wall. Auf. Meaning onto, on top of. In the accusative, remember the movie camera. Die Katze steigt auf den Tisch. The cat climbs onto the table. Die Katze steigt aufs Dach. The cat climbs onto the roof. Ich steige auf die Leiter. I climb the ladder. In the dative, like a photo. Die Katze sitzt auf dem Tisch. The cat's sitting on the table. Die Katze sitzt auf dem Dach. The cat's sitting on the roof. Die Katze sitzt auf der Leiter. The cat's sitting on the ladder. Hinter. Meaning behind. In the accusative, to show movement. 
Das Kind läuft hinter den Schuppen. The child runs behind the shed. Das Kind läuft hinter das Haus. The child runs behind the house. Das Kind läuft hinter die Mauer. The child runs behind the wall. In the dative to show location. Das Osterei ist hinter dem Schrank. The Easter egg is behind the cupboard. Das Osterei ist hinter dem Buch. The Easter egg is behind the book. Das Osterei ist hinter der Tür. The Easter egg is behind the door. In. Meaning in, into, or inside. In the accusative case, to show movement. Ich gehe in den Garten. I'm going into the garden. Ich gehe ins, in das Kino. Literally, I'm going into the cinema. I'll be entering the building. In English, we just say, I'm going to the movies. Ich gehe in die Kirche. I'm going into the church. Same idea. I'll be entering the building. In English, we just say, I'm going to church. In the dative, to show location. Ich sitze im, in dem Garten. I'm sitting in the garden. Ich sitze im, in dem Kino. I'm sitting in the cinema. Ich sitze in der Kirche. I'm sitting in the church. Neben. Meaning beside. In the accusative, to show movement. Ich stelle den Stuhl neben den Tisch. I'm putting the chair next to the table. Ich stelle den Stuhl neben das Bett. I'm putting the chair next to the bed. Ich stelle den Stuhl neben die Tür. I'm putting the chair next to the door. In the dative, to show location. Der Stuhl steht neben dem Tisch. The chair is next to the table. Der Stuhl steht neben dem Bett. The chair is next to the bed. Der Stuhl steht neben der Tür. The chair is next to the door. Über. Meaning over or above. In the accusative, remember the movie camera? Ich hänge die Lampe über den Tisch. I'm hanging the light fitting above the table. Ich hänge die Lampe übers Bett. I hang the light above the bed. Ich hänge die Lampe über die Pflanze. I hang the light over the plant. In the dative, remember the photo? Die Lampe hängt über dem Tisch. The light hangs over the table. Die Lampe hängt über dem Bett. The light hangs above the bed. Die Lampe hängt über der Pflanze. The light hangs over the plant. Unter. Meaning under. In the accusative, to show movement. Ich lege den Schlüssel unter den Stein. I lay the key under the stone. We would normally say I put the key under the stone. Ich lege den Schlüssel unter das Buch. I lay the key under the book. Ich lege den Schlüssel unter die Topfpflanze. I put the key under the pot plant. In the dative to show location. Der Schlüssel liegt unter dem Stein. The key lies under the stone. Der Schlüssel liegt unter dem Buch. The key lies under the book. Der Schlüssel liegt unter der Topfpflanze. The key is lying under the pot plant. For. Meaning in front of. In the accusative showing movement. Ich fahre mein Auto vor den Schuppen. I drive my car in front of the shed. Ich fahre mein Auto vors Haus. I drive my car in front of the house. Ich fahre mein Auto vor die Garage. I drive my car in front of the garage. In the dative to show location. Das Auto steht vor dem Schuppen. The car is in front of the shed. Das Auto steht vor dem Haus. The car is in front of the house. Das Auto steht vor der Garage. The car is in front of the garage. Zwischen. Meaning between. And here's an example with the plural. In the accusative to show movement. Ich stecke das Papier zwischen die Bücher. I stick the paper between the books. In the dative to show location. Das Papier steckt zwischen den Büchern. The paper is tucked between the books. Remember that N ending on nouns in the dative plural. Den Büchern. 
On this slide, we've introduced a few verbs that indicate either direction or location. Yet again, German tends to be more exact, or maybe exacting in this respect. Let's have a look at the direction verbs first. If we place things in English, we very often just use the verb to put. Whereas in German, making the distinction between placing something upright or flat or into a tight space is absolutely compulsory. There's no general word like to put. In German, we have legen to lay or to place something flat. Ich lege das Buch auf den Stuhl. I'm putting the book on the chair. Stellen to stand to place upright. Ich stelle die Lampe auf den Tisch. I'm putting the light onto the table. Stecken to stick to put something into a tight or confined space. Ich stecke die Zeitung in die Tasche. I'm putting the newspaper in the bag. Hängen to hang to attach something vertically. Ich hänge das Bild an die Wand. I'm hanging the picture on the wall. Setzen to put animals or people or anything that's alive down onto something. Ich setze die Katze auf den Boden. I'm putting the cat on the floor. German also uses particular verbs to indicate the location of things. Although it's possible to use ist, just like is in English, Germans tend to use the specialized verbs a lot more. Here they are. Liegen, meaning to lie. Das Buch liegt auf dem Stuhl. The book is lying on the chair, or we'd probably just say the book is on the chair. Stehen, to stand. Die Lampe steht auf dem Tisch. So in German, you say the light stands on the table, but in English we'd probably just say the light is on the table. Stecken. To be inserted, stuck in something. Die Zeitung steckt in der Tasche. In English we'd just say the newspaper is in the bag. Hängen. To hang. Das Bild hängt an der Wand. So in English we could say the picture is hanging on the wall or just the picture is on the wall. Sitzen. To sit. Die Katze sitzt auf dem Boden. The cat sitting on the floor. If we form pairs with these verbs, we see that with the exception of stecken, gesteckt, the verbs differ depending on whether they're used to indicate a direction or location. Compare this to the English to lay, to lie. I lay the book on the table, I lie on the beach. Note that verbs indicating direction, to put, generally have regular past participles and take a direct object. We call them transitive verbs, as the action of the verb is transferred from one person or thing to another. The verbs indicating location, to be situated in, often have irregular past participles and no object. We call them intransitive verbs. Look at the table. Verbs indicating direction that can take a direct object have a regular past participle. Legen, gelegt. Stellen, gestellt. Setzen, gesetzt. Hängen, gehängt. Verbs indicating location that don't take direct objects have irregular past participles. Liegen, gelegen. Stehen, gestanden. Sitzen, gesessen. Hängen, gehangen. I'm sure you've got the direction location message. It's a fairly straightforward concept, but as always, the application is a different matter. You'll have to rewire your brain and think German to get it right automatically. Hard work, but the fringe benefits are fantastic. So let's get going in the right direction and put lots of different things in different places.